The Chesapeake Bay watershed is huge. It includes parts of six states, New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, and West Virginia, as well as the District of Columbia. It covers more than 64,000 square miles and is home to cities, suburban areas, and more than 85,000 farms. The combination creates a serious runoff problem for the entire region. Some of the runoff contains poultry manure. Rich in nitrogen and phosphorus, it contributes to pollution in the bay and its rivers. One possible solution involves using poultry litter as an energy source. For three years, several farmers agreed to help test this concept, using poultry litter as an energy source to heat their poultry houses. Matt Curtis owns a poultry farm in central Pennsylvania, not far from the Susquehanna River. It's about uh, 68 acres uh, with about 80,000 birds. Uh, the, the birds, the, the broilers, the chickens are the only animals on, on the farm. We had to be and wanted to be environmentally responsible given uh, the location of our farm so close to the Susquehanna. So that meant the, that the burner was, was a perfect fit for, for what we were trying to accomplish. We'll burn about 80, 85 percent of it. And, and there again, you know, the placement dates that we get to bird, the, the weather temperatures uh, affect how much we burn, but typically about, about 80 percent of the 450 ton on average. Uh, it's augered in, it's metered in. Uh, the unit is a, is a Canadian unit, it's called a Blue Flame, and it's an old Stoker furnace. What they have done to it is some very intelligent people have built a program and come up with a dry system to steer that burner to, to combust a, a, a wide variety of fuels and, and moistures. Uh, so given that done, it has worked very well with the poultry litter. We've been at it for about five, six years now that, that we have a viable fuel, but it does take some, some management skills as far as the litter side of it. It's, it's not complicated, it's easy to do. It doesn't require a lot of time as far as a daily chore or daily maintenance. Uh, it seems to do very well without a lot of, of uh, daily work to it or adjustments. It, it seems to be flexible enough to, to maintain itself uh, hours on end. I think we started uh, four weeks ago. I, I started for this flock here, uh, which would be our early fall flock. Uh, I haven't touched it since. The key nutrients right there we've, we've isolated. Our nutrient plans, nutrient management plans are all phosphorus based in this state. So, and one of the big concerns as far as the nutrients going to the bay is phosphorus. And we've, we've contained 100% of that phosphorus in a reduced form where it's, it's economically uh, feasible to export it out of the bay region. And, and that's what they're doing now. Different technologies were tested on the farms that participated. Not every farm had the same success as Mac Curtis. Glenn Rhodes raises turkeys on his River Hill farms in Port Republic, Virginia. He's been running a burner system too, but with mixed results. My experience has been it's been a lot of fun and it's been a lot of work. It's been a dream of mine for years to use on-farm energy and this is a project that fits that goal precisely. We're in the Shenandoah Valley, Virginia. Uh, we're just upwind of the Shenandoah National Park and that is a class one airshed, so we want to be very um, cautious with introducing these systems. We want to make sure they're, they're clean and efficient. We run about 280,000 turkeys a year through all of our housing, so we would produce probably a little over 2,000 tons of poultry litter on, on the total operation. Well, the litter is reduced down to 15 to 20 percent ash uh, coming out of the unit, and so there would still be a fair amount of ash that would need to be removed and recycled. I would love to burn litter full-time now, but with the emissions issues, I am currently burning wood chips because it is a very clean fuel, it's very red, readily available, and it is also a renewable energy. So we're, we're slowly working from readily available energy into energy we, we produce on the farm that hopefully soon we can burn it cleanly. I think the big challenge remaining is to reduce the emissions and then get permitting across the industry where it would be simple to go buy a unit and have it already permitted. Uh, that's the big step is finding something like when you go buy a vehicle, you don't have to buy emissions permits. It's already done by the manufacturer. So that's what I see as the, the big 
uh, problem in the future. Jeff Porter is team leader for the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Animal Manure and Nutrient Management Team. We're still in the demonstration stage, still trying to learn how these systems work, uh, what some of the issues are of, of uh, why some work better than others, uh, what some of the issues are. So, so I guess we could still say we're um, still in the, the research and development stage of uh, utilizing these thermochemical processes. I enjoy it. I like it. I like the heat. I like the way it works. I like the way um, it, it secures our farm environmentally for the transition to the next generation. I'm proud of, of the reductions we've made uh, as far as our nutrient reductions. Uh, our soil samples will show that we've actually gone backwards in the amount of phosphorus in our soil samples. Um, to me, it's, it's worth it. I think there's going to be more. Uh, there already is more of them going in the field. I love the concept of sustainability, not so much for the sake of sustainability, but that it works in, in an actual farm environment where you can take a product, create a value out of it, and, and again, add more value and everybody wins in the situation. And ultimately, it's good for the environment if we can move some of these nutrients out of the watershed to where they're actually needed. I, I see five years down the road, if we continue in this, this uh, research and development, continue evaluating some of these, these uh, processes, we're going to see some products that are going to come out that I think are going to float to the top. They're going to say, here's one that, that we know is going to work. It's going to be able to handle different uh, moisture levels, going to be able to handle different types of manures, and we're going to find those that, that we can then start utilizing on some of these smaller operations.